Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Thursday night Bible study. Tonight, we are in John chapter number nine. Once again, we are in John chapter number nine. Before we get started, do we have anyone that has any prayer requests? Any prayer requests before we get started? All right, if we have no prayer requests, I'm going to ask Brother Lewis, if you don't mind, my brother, would you please open us up with a word of prayer? Yes, let us go to our Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you for blessing us to see this day, dear God, and we thank you that we can come to you. We have the privilege to come to you in prayer, thanks to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died on the cross for our sins. Dear Lord, we are uh, on this Zoom call tonight to study another portion of your word. We pray that you will help us in understanding and knowledge and that we may grow in wisdom with your holy scriptures. And we just, Father, I just want to say thank you, Father, to our teachers who has been, uh, all the brethren who's been uh, apt to teach on this, uh, during these Zoom call studies, whether it be Brother Stevenson, Brother Javier, Brother Kennedy, Brother uh, Coffey, and so many other brothers. Father, I just want to say thank you. I know they don't, they're not asking for thanks, but I just want to give them thanks, Father. And just, I'm so thankful for them. And I'm so thankful for all the saints. Uh, who are uh, who, who call in weekly, day in and day out, Father. It shows their uh, zeal for you, Father, their desire to know more about you. And, Father, it's so encouraging to see so so many saints that are strong in the faith. Father, we just want to thank you once again. We just pray you'll be with our teacher tonight uh, who brings, uh, as we go through this uh, book of John, um, Father, we continue to grow in your word. Father, we just pray that everything is pleasing to you. We just pray, Father, that you will help us to do your will. We ask this prayer in your son's Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that prayer, Brother Lewis. Once again, everyone, we are in John chapter number nine tonight. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Brother Javier. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Lewis, for that prayer. Uh, good, uh, good evening, Saints. Good to have you guys again tonight. Thank you for letting me teach, Brother Green. Um, this is everybody's lesson. If there's any comments or questions, uh, please repeat it from the oracles. We're all servants here. We're all here to learn. We're all here to grow. We're all here to repeat God's word, to guide us and teach us. So at this time, I want to ask um, Brother Green, can you start us off with John chapter 9, verses 1 through 10? Most definitely, my brother. Uh, John chapter 9, verse number 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. Jesus answered, neither have this uh, man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind said, is it, is not this he that beggared and excuse me, is it not this he that sat and begged? Some said that is he. Others said he is like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes opened? Amen. Thank you, Brother Green, for that reading, my brother. You know, when, look, when you look at this scripture, these scriptures, verse 1 through 10, you look at what Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. We know in the beginning the world was made. And on the, on the seventh day is when God rested from his labor. And so when it comes to these scriptures that we're reading, Jesus is on earth, and he's working the works of God in flesh. Mankind, blind, those that are lame, those that need to be healed, but he's also teaching the gospel. 
And so in the beginning of Genesis, the days that God made the earth, then he rested. But Jesus is on earth and he has work that he has to do. When you look at what he said here in verse number three, neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, it's not saying that his parents never sinned at all, but it's saying that the purpose of him being blind is not because of what they've done. It's because of the glory that is going to be shown and the honor that's going to be manifest. When you look at uh, what happened here in verse number two, his, uh, his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And so his disciples already understand that Jesus Christ knows that Jesus knows what happened to him when it comes to why he was born that way. They understand what Jesus understands, that he understands the mind of men. He understands uh, why things happen, why curses were to occur or blessings. When you look at Ezekiel uh, chapter number 18, looking at verse 19, uh, it says, ye say, ye why doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father when the son hath done that which is lawful and right and hath kept all my statutes and hath done them he shall surely live the soul that sinneth it shall die the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked uh, shall be uh, upon him so when it comes to how God operates his righteousness. He doesn't place the sins of the father or the mother on the child, uh, on the son. In the book of 2 Samuel, and some may get this from the Old Testament, where in 2 Samuel, the issue with uh, King David, where King David had sinned. And when you look at uh, chapter 12, looking at verse 13, we'll see what was told to the king. 2 Samuel 12, 13, David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme the, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted, and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread uh, with, with them. Now, somebody asked the question, well, why did the child die if it was David that committed the sin? When it comes to God's purpose, when it comes to the reasoning, Remember, God created the child. God put the soul in the child. And because of David's disobedience, he took the child away. But the child still did not sin. The other example is in 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter number uh, 14, looking at verse number 12. 1 Kings 14, 12, where we read uh, about Jeroboam. Everybody knows Jeroboam. Brother Henry quotes him concerning building, making two golden calves, one in Dan, one in Bethel. They worshiped in Dan. They worshiped in Bethel. And in 1 Kings 14, 12, it says, Arise thou. This is what uh, was told to the wife of, wife of Jeroboam. Ahijah was the one that told him. 1 Kings 14, 12, Arise thou therefore, get thee to thine own house. And when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him. For he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave. Because in him there is found some good thing you see that toward the lord god of israel in the house in the house of jeroboam and so when it says in him the child has found some good thing and again god is judging his heart but again he's taking him from jeroboam because of jeroboam's disobedience it doesn't mean that the child sinned because it says here he found some good thing in the child but again because of his sin he's taking him away now when you look at Moses, Moses, uh, the sin that he committed is what caused him to not enter into the promised land. But he still entered into heaven because we have Matthew 17, where you have Elijah and Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. But he just didn't enter in. 
to the promised land. And when it comes to the books, the first five books of the Old Testament, you know, Moses wrote those. But when it comes to him just not entering in, it's because of disobedience into the land. But he made it into paradise. So when it comes to the measurements of what God is doing on earth, we are his creation. We are his uh, people on earth. We have been born again of water and spirit and been added to the kingdom. And so God knows the measurements of what to give. When you look at uh, Genesis chapter number 50, Genesis chapter 50, looking at verse number 20, Genesis 50, 20, going back to John uh, chapter 9. Uh, yeah, John chapter 9, Genesis 50, uh, looking at verse 20, it says, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much alive. And so God already knew before he made Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the grandchildren and the children of Jacob. He already knew what was going to happen. And so because he has that foreknowledge, he plans good to save many people. So God meant it unto good. And so when it comes to the birth of the blind man, God already had a manifestation of glory prepared for that blind man. He knew exactly where that blind man was going to be. That blind man was not going to be in Egypt. He was not going to be in Samaria. He was going to be exactly where he was. And that's, that day is when that blessing came unto him. Uh, Genesis, forgive me, Psalms 116, 15. Psalms 116, verse number 15. Let me slow down. Going fast. Psalms 116, verse 15. The Bible says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. When we look at the case of the blind man, he may ask the question, or he may have asked the question, Why was I born this way? Why was I born blind? He didn't know what the purpose was years later. When it comes to someone dying in the Lord, someone outside the body of Christ may ask, why was my loved one taken? Again, we read them, Psalms 116, 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Go back to Genesis 50, verse 20. The question, why am I going through jail time? Joseph, uh, why is this happening to me? Why was I enslaved? Again, they meant it for evil. God meant it good and so some things are not revealed until later and when it comes to the saints the world may have an opposition or a opposing thought toward God why did they take my loved one uh, but we understand that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints that's why we beseech souls to come to the knowledge of the truth obey the good news that Jesus Christ died buried and resurrected According to the scriptures, that they can be born again according to his commandment, his divine command to be saved so they can understand verses like this, so that they, they can be comforted, so that they don't lean on their own understanding and come to their own conclusion and then hate God. There's a lot of people hating God for different reasons. Why is there a baby suffering in Africa, in India? Why did he take my loved ones? They don't understand the scriptures. They don't have that light within them to guide them into all truth. You look at uh, uh, the scripture in Nehemiah chapter number three. Nehemiah chapter number three, going back to the scripture that describes uh, the pool. I want to look at something here. Nehemiah chapter number three, uh, because it shows you the detail of what was built uh, back then in the Old Testament. Nehemiah 3.15, Bible says here, uh, but the gate of the fountain repaired Shulam, the son of Kol Hose, the ruler of part of Mizpah. He built it and covered it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and the wall of the pool of Siloa by the king's garden, and unto the stairs that go down up from the city of David. So here in Nehemiah, we have the pool of Siloa, where it was being built and repaired. By Shalom, and we have where God is do, doing a work through Christ in the Pool of Siloam in John chapter number nine in the New Testament. 
Uh, at this time, is there any questions or thoughts before we go to the next reading? Yeah, uh, Brother Stevenson, you can go ahead and I'll come behind you with my question. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, great teaching, uh, Brother Javier. I just wanted to, I wanted to see if, if I'm right on this. Uh, you, when you like Ezekiel eighteen twenty, and you read that, and, and that is true that uh, Ezekiel eighteen, the soul that sinned, it, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the right shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But even prior to Ezekiel eighteen twenty, is Ezekiel eighteen and four, and I wanted to read this. And something we have to understand, brothers and sisters, and that's this: Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the father, God says. So also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sent it, uh, he says, it shall die. And, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong on this. You know, and that's something we have to understand. All souls belong to God. And I'm just thinking about uh, David's case uh, with God allowing the, the child uh, that he and Bathsheba had had together illegitimately. And, and he prayed and God killed the child. Could it be that that what God is saying is that no soul dies spiritually? Uh, yes. Because yes. of the sins of their parents, because and, and, when I look at at Second Samuel, let's and, mm -hmm. and I look at Second Samuel, the reason this baby was not allowed was because of David's actions. But 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 here's what here and here's my thinking on that. But we have to understand that's what sin does. You know, sin brings about death. Whether that baby you know died at home or was born and lived to be fifty. You know, at the end of the day, if Jesus doesn't come back, we all die. You know, we all leave here. And so there are times where my actions can cause somebody else to die physically. My sin. Uh, you know, I can be drunk and live going down the road and kill innocent people. And they die physically because, because of my actions and my sin. But what I want to make sure I know the Bible is teaching nobody uh, dies spiritually. Uh, because of somebody else's actions or because of somebody else's sins. And so great, great teaching, Brother Avi. And that's something we all have to make sure that we we get. Jesus came to save us from spiritual uh, death and don't get you know so caught up on the physical life that you and I live down here and the suffering that we face uh, in this world because of sin. Amen. And that's what I was, that's the point that I was getting to, my brother. When it comes to the flesh, the flesh was taken. It doesn't translate like when it comes to Jeroboam, Jeroboam's sins is what caused the child to die. But it tells us what he found in the child, some good thing. He found some good thing. See, he, there's two things here. There's a flesh and then there's a spirit. And when the soul is taken out of the body, that's called death. But again, just because the soul is taken out of the body doesn't mean it's for that person's sin. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. When a saint dies, the soul is taken out by God. The body, it turns to dust again. Did that person die because they died in the Lord's church and they died faithfully? No, that's just a process of life. Because of sin, all men die. But they didn't die because they committed that sin that same day or that same moment. If that were the case, then everybody that dies in the Lord is not going to heaven because they died. That would be the case. Every person that died in the Lord, then Paul would be wrong in the Thessalonian letter when he mentioned uh, those that died in the Lord. Then they, they all went to hell. But that's not true. And so when we look at Jeroboam, his son, uh, it wasn't for the child's sin or Jeroboam's sin. So God took the soul out, but he found good in the child so it's it's giving us detail of the occurrence you know that occurrence so thank you brother uh brother green i think you had your hand up as well yeah i i just want to thank brother because i had two questions and i want to thank brother stevenson for that explanation because you know i was also thinking that those two uh the two children died you know but it was the parents that committed the sin and i was thinking especially when you read the case with jeroboam that you know it said god found some good thing in that child that because of their wickedness you know god allowed them kids to die because of the goodness that he's seen in them kids and that he didn't 
you know, for whatever reason, you know, he didn't want to see them to suffer through the wickedness of what their parents did. That's what I was thinking. But thank you, Brother Stevenson, for that explanation. But my second question is uh, verse four, going back to John nine and verse number four. Uh, where Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is while it is day. It said the night cometh when no man can work. So my question is, is Jesus referring to his death in the in the latter part of that scripture? Because, you know, in the next he says, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. So I was wondering in that scripture, is this what Jesus was saying that, you know, he must do the work uh, of the father who sent them. Well, he said, why I still day? Why I'm still here? And then he goes on to say, the night cometh when no man work. Uh, no man can work. So as he said, like uh, once he's gone out of the world, that that you know the works that he do, no man can work them. Once he goes out of the world. No, when it, in verse four and verse five is two different uh, descriptions because when it says while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. So if he's describing himself as the day here in verse four, and the night cometh when no man can work. So if he leaves, nobody can can do works. They started doing works after. He even said after uh, he leaves, he said, you guys will do greater works th than myself. And so he's describing the work that he's doing to and fro. But then verse 5 is when he's describing himself as the light of the world, which he gives light unto the world. So he's describing it in two different ways where he has to work during the daylight. He has to move. He has to constantly do God's work. And in verse 5, he describes, again, himself as the light. So if you take a literal in verse number four, as him describing himself as a day, it would mean that when he need, when he leaves, uh, no man works. But we know that's not true because his apostles work, Christians work right after uh, his departure uh, into the heavens. So and they continued praying even before uh, the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. And so, yeah, that's where he, he switches in verse number five concerning himself, which he is the light that should enlighten you inwardly. The sun gives you light outwardly. And you have to move about and he has to move about and work spiritually while the light is on the earth. But again, verse number five, he's the light of the world and pay attention to that light because there's darkness in the world as well. And so we are to take in that light so we can be lights like candles set up on the top of a, somewhere where everybody can see, where the room can be seen. So I hope that answers your question, brother. brother Green. Uh, if there's nobody else, I don't see any hands. Uh, can... Brother Henry, can you read verse 11 through 20? Sure can, my brother. He answered and said, a man, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received sight. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened in his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon my eyes and I washed and, and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. He said unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that received his sight. And they asked them, saying, is this your son who you say was born blind? <laughs> How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Bless you. you know, it's almost uh, it's almost comical when you look at this uh, reading that our brother just read, uh, because they just don't believe the Pharisees. They just they just don't want to believe what occurred. You know, they're such legalists that they didn't want to see. When you look at John chapter five, it has a similar story where we read Jesus Christ in John chapter five. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at a Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. And these lay a, a great multitude of infantile folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. 
For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool, troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped and made whole, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. There was a certain man there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time, and that cause, in that case, he said unto him, What thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. While I'm, I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise up, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, That was cured. It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. So similar situation. We got a pool of Bethsaida in John chapter 5. We got a pool of, uh, of Siloam in John chapter 9. And so when it comes to those different pools, God healed him in that moment without using uh, without using the, the pool. In John chapter 5, when you look at verse number 8, he just said, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. But God put the power through the hand of an angel to stir up, trouble the water, and whoever got in first were healed. So that's the specific pool in Bethsaida where the power was put. You look at this man. Jesus told him in the pool of Siloam, there's other pools, but that's the pool where you're going to wash and be healed. When you look at the Old Testament in the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 5, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 10, and Elisha sent a messenger unto him. He's talking about naming the leper. Go and wash in Jordan. Seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Parpar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away. In a rage, his servant came near and spake unto him, said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, what is thou not have done it? How much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean. Then when he down, dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. So when it comes to the prophet, Tell a name in the leper, go into the Jordan, specific one. That's where you're going to be clean. Direct command, direct command, Jordan. There's other rivers. There's other places. Abana and Parfar, rivers of Damascus. But that's not where the prophet said. Jesus Christ, he told the blind man to go to the pool of Siloam. That's exactly where you're going to go. And so the angel in John 5 there was a work that was not spoken about in the Old Testament where the cleansing was going to be in the pool of Bethsaida. Today, in the New Testament, Jesus Christ, he told his disciples to go into all the world, preach the gospel. He that believes in is baptized should be saved. He that believes not should be damned. He told Nicodemus, in John 3, 3 through 8, if a man is not born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We don't have to go to Jordan to dip people to be saved. We don't have to go to the pool of Siloam, pool of Bethsaida, wherever there's water. If the body can be dipped after they make that confession that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Colossians 2, God does an operation in the water where the sins are removed and they receive the Holy Spirit. In that moment, you don't have to go into any specific pool, river. It could be any river, any pool, any location where there's water. And so. When it comes to where God puts power, in the book of Acts, chapter number 8, there was a man named Philip. The Holy Spirit told him to join himself to the chariot. He asked him, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? They read the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. And in that book, they were reading concerning the crucifixion and the suffering of Christ. He said, is he talking about himself or some other man? He started teaching him about Jesus Christ. As they were rolling on the chariot, 
He said, here is water. What hinders me to be baptized? He said, you have to believe in Jesus Christ, that he's the son of God. He said, I believe that Christ is the son of God. He got off the chariot and he baptized him right there in the desert. And so when it comes to power today to be saved, you can be saved today in any water where you can be dipped in. You'll receive the Holy Spirit and have your sins removed. But when you look at this in this same scripture, in verse 19, and they asked him, saying, Is this your son who ye say was born blind? How then doth now he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he is born blind. But what by what means now he now seeth, we know not. Or who had opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. I want to say this. When it comes to fear, when it comes to fear, uh, saints, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of a sound mind. Uh, when it comes to their actions on the Sabbath day. They will retrieve a sheep. Or an animal. That was stuck in a pit. On the Sabbath day. So their, their hypocrisy is showing. Where they are not seeing God's power. God's hand at work. At this time can we have. Uh, Brother Jer. Can you read. Verses 21 through 30. 22 through 30. Yes, 22. Yes, sir. All right. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, what did he what did he do to you? He how how he opened your eyes. He answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear hear it again? Will, will you also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from when he, he is. And the man answered and said unto them, Where, why herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from when he is, and yet he have opened my eyes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jared. The Whoa. state of the Pharisees right now, my brothers, is that they're confounded. They are confounded. Verse 18, the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called his parents of him that had received his sight. They already talked to his parents. They still didn't believe. And then they talked to him again. He said, are you going to hear it again? Look at verse number 16. Therefore, and some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles, there was a division among them. The Pharisees were divided in the situation because they're trying to figure out how is this happening and he's not keeping a Sabbath. They're so legalistic concerning this, that concerning the Sabbath, that they're not understanding what just occurred, the power that occurred. So he's they're telling him to glorify God. Don't him, don't give Jesus the glory. Even though it's God that did the work through Jesus Christ. When you look at Matthew chapter number 12. Matthew chapter number 12. Look at something real quick, saints, when it comes to what God said about, about the Sabbath. Matthew 12, verse 5. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath day, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. He's the ruler of the Sabbath day. He made the Sabbath day. He's the ruler of it. And so when it comes to doing good, there's another scripture that Jesus described concerning doing good on the Sabbath day. It's not a sin. And so when you look at this case, they're confounded within themselves. They're confused. 
They ask him again because they just can't believe. They don't want to believe that Jesus Christ healed him. Give God the glory. Let's ask his parents. And then they're going to revile him as they did in these verses. And so when it comes to look at look at uh look at Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Go back to the parents. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. The parents are so fearful of getting kicked out of the synagogue that they're not even excited for their son. They're not even overjoyed concerning their son. That he has been healed of his blindness. That's how fearful they were. Saints, it is needful to love God above all men, above all leaders, above all things. Because when you fear man above God, you become like these parents. You become like them or you're frozen become like them they're teaching legalistic in first john chapter uh third john forgive me third epistle chapter one verse 10 wherefore if i come i'll remember his deeds talking about diatrophies remember his deeds which he doth prating against us with malicious words and not content therewith neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would and cast them out of the church. Again, Diotrephes was seeking or loving the preeminence in the New Testament church. When you look at Matthew chapter number 23, Matthew chapter 23, looking at verse number 13, it says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. And so what they're doing is they're not allowing the saints of God to go in uh, to the syn synagogue, the temple. And this fear that they put in people's hearts is also causing not themselves not to enter in and also others like his parents to not enter in. They were supposed to be overjoyed this day. They were supposed to be filled with excitement on this day. Their son is able to see them in person. Their son is standing right in front of their parents. Verse 19, they said, forgive me, they asked them saying, is this your son who ye say was born blind? He's right in front of them. Is this your son who ye say was born blind? They were supposed to be overfilled with joy, but fear caused them to, have that faith removed and with the power of God. Verse 29, we know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. Again, because they don't ask. Because they don't ask. The Old Testament talks about Bethlehem. It talks about where he's from. And because they just go mouth to mouth, what do they say in Matthew chapter 16? Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? What were their answers that they were spreading about? In Matthew chapter 16, they're having <laughs> different conversations about who Jesus Christ was. They said, some John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. They were confused on where he was born. They were confused on who he is. And they did not want to believe the power of God that just occurred on this day. When you seek the preeminence, you remove your heart from God because you put yourself first. So when someone brings you the word of God to you, you don't accept the word of God because you've already put your principalities or your doctrine first. So if your principalities or doctrine goes against the doctrine of Christ, then you're going to be blinded. Is there any comments or questions uh, after that reading? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Good, I'm good sorry, stuff, was... um, brother Javier. Um, you know it's it's crazy. I'm 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 rereading this man. These jokers are crooked. Um, I, I think uh, verse 22 is so it's so pivotal because 
you know, this wasn't the first time in, in John chapter five, Jesus had healed uh, on the Sabbath day. And when I look at verse 22 and it says, uh, these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. So that's uh, the synagogue. That's that, that was a huge deal. And to be put out of the, the, the synagogue was extremely was, was huge. And they already planted that seed um, of doubt in people's head. You know, and which which didn't allow them to, um, you know, to go along with what you were saying that didn't allow them to take joy in their son being able to see for the very first time. And it just goes to show, you know, you, you know, we're, we're sitting here talking about a blind person, but they are the ones that are truly blind. Um, you know, their, their actions and the things that they're doing, you know, trying to hinder people um, from having the ability to understand who Jesus is at this moment is, 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 you know, is, is so damaging because uh, it, it, it's almost reflective of a lot of stuff that take place today, how um, people create their own level of, of doctrines and, and traditions that supersede what the Bible says. And then knowing that, that people would rather listen to a person rather than open this book and read, you know, they, they, they preach and they say thing that's contrary to this book not allowing people to see who Christ really is, you know, and, and it's, 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 it's just so it's, it's crazy that when you, when you like, I'm, I'm reading it in slow motion as you're speaking, reading it. And it's like, man, these jokers hearts are just, it's ridiculous. It, it, it makes absolutely no sense. The length that they are willing to go to ensure that people are afraid to come to the knowledge of to themselves that Jesus is Christ. That he is the one that sent, and it's 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 just amazing to uh to to see, and then kind of like when you put it in perspective of what we deal with today with so many different dominations, it's it's a repetitive process. Amen. God bless you, brother Kenny, and thank you for bringing that out because when you look at verse twenty two, they created a brand new doctrine for the synagogue. This was a new teaching for the synagogue. So anybody that comes in, they were asking them or or finding out. If any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. So they're communicating. Do you believe that he's Christ? I believe he is a Christ. Get out. Do you believe that he's Christ? Get out. And so this is a brand new doctrine that they made for the synagogue if anyone were to come in. So this is spreading. That's why the parents were so fearful. This doctrine is spreading around the Jews. Do you believe he's a Christ? I don't know. Uh, he... He raised the little girl from the dead. He he healed the blind. He he raised the lame. Uh, he's nobody preaches like this man. And so some of them were fearful when they came into the synagogue. Some of them were probably saying no. Some were saying yes. Or in their heart, they believed he was a Christ, but said no in person. You know, there was different different types of cases that the Jews had concerning this scenario because they wanted to go to the synagogue to study. They wanted to go and worship but again this new doctrine and rule was if you confess that he's a christ you cannot come in here and so god bless you brother kenny that's thank you for bringing that out uh brother green i think you had your hand up yes sir um i was just you know the comments that were being made uh, when it was talking about the Pharisees and the hard heartedness and the things. And it brought to mind the scripture in Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 29, when Jesus told them that, you know, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And that's what came into my mind, you know, with them feeling the way they feel. And, you know, they're telling them, well, you know, make sure you get God the glory. Don't get his man no glory. And like you were saying earlier, the power came from God through Christ to do these things. So that scripture jumped in my head, you know, that how you can see them, the air that they're making, not knowing the scriptures, which they're supposed to be the keepers of the law. So they should have known, nor the power of God. Uh, that's all I have, brother. Amen. God bless you, brother. Brother Green. Thank you, my brother, for that comment. And that's it's a sad case. But we have the same problem today where um, as we read the text to our brethren and even those outside, they don't want to believe what is read. You know, one time I read First Peter 3.21 to a there was a minister that was not in the body of Christ. And he started to do a crab walk where I mentioned uh, baptism does now save us. And he just starts smiling and 
and walking backward. Backward. Okay. <laughs> okay. I talked to the Jehovah's Witness on yesterday. Two women. And I was telling them concerning the kingdom. Mark 9, 1. There be some of you stand here that shall not taste the death till you see the kingdom come with power. It came on the day of Pentecost. Colossians 1, 13. We've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. 1 Corinthians 15, where it says the kingdom will be delivered up to the Father. And in the book of Luke, it says the kingdom of God is within you. As I describe these scriptures, and I showed them the Bible, where it was in the Bible, they just did not want to believe that to the point that they got up, they took all their little books in their little rack that they have, where they have their little booklets, and then they got in their car, and then they left. And it was a point where they could have read the scriptures and believed, but because they've been brainwashed so much, they are now remaining blind in that state. And they, they cannot be, they, they're not going to have vision until they receive the, the knowledge of the truth of the scriptures. So... God bless you, brother, for that. Uh, brother Kennedy, can you read verses 31 through 41, or is it? Hey, um, I, I just want to, I want to add this, um, um, before, before I read, um, you know, I was just looking at this, um, you know, this interrogation of the parents and, and I was trying to, uh, uh, get an understanding of how it can fit us, you know, because the parents, they knew what the answer was, but, but the like scripture tells us they was afraid and, you know, you know, sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where, you know, when we are having conversations with loved ones and, uh, you know, a question is asked, you know, like, OK, so, uh, yeah, I, I was listening to the sermon that, you know, that, where you where you worship and, you know, based on 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 what 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 that person said, are you telling me that um, that I'm not saved? You know, and, and 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 if you're not willing to at that particular time, you know, regard, regardless of the relationship of with you and that person to, you know, give them the truth you're you're pretty much in the same situation that these parents are in you know knowing the right answer and not willing to speak up um so we you know we got to be careful you know i look i've had conversations with my mother you know and 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 you know you got to use tact you got to be respectful but you also got to be able to tell them the truth um and especially if you stand firm on what you're saying you believe that's part of the believing you know you can't choose when to believe and and, and when to hide so um yeah, I just wanted to add that. Um, and you said verses 41 through 30, I mean 35 through 41. 31 through 41. But 31 yeah, through 41. Verse, yeah, thank you for that. And we have to we have to let them know the Bible says this, God says this, so they can believe what God said. You know, Amen. so they come to you. So you saying that I'm not saved? Well, how did you get saved? Well, sinner's prayer is not in the Bible. You know, do you see that in the Bible? I never read it before. Can you find it for me? You can't find it. This is how they were saved in the Bible. And you can be saved too. And so that's how you, you show them the scriptures, what God said, what the Bible says, because they'll try to make it personal. They'll try to, um, you know, show forth, you've offended me, saying I'm not saved. But again, let them know, hey, just show me at, show me where the sinner's prayer is at, and then we can go from there. But we know it's not in the scriptures. So, amen. Thank you, brother. That's how we have, where is it at in the Bible? Uh, go ahead. All right, verse 31 through 41. Uh, now, brother, 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 can I say something? To, can I, I'm sorry, Brother Kenny. Can I, and Brother Javier, that's what they did in the text, huh? They made it personal with this guy, yeah. didn't they? That's a great yeah. point you made because when you look and, he, and when he answered them in verse 27, I've told you already and you do not hear. I mean, he, he's standing up. He's bold. Well, yeah, he, he said, why will you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? And sometimes that's, that's how you got to talk to some folk. You got to know who you're dealing with. But then notice what they did. Then they reviled him and said, you're a disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. So to your point, great point. That's what people do. You know, when they can't attack the message, brothers, they attack the messenger. And we got to make sure we understand that. But, you know, nonetheless, if, if you're on, standing on the side with Christ, you're standing on the winning side. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you amen. I tell them I'm not the, I'm not the right, the letter or the, the person who wrote the letter. I'm just the mailman delivering it to you. All right. Verse 31. Now, we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, 
was it not heard that any man opened his eyes, opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, thou wast altogether born in sin, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, dost thou believe on the son of God? He answered and said, who is he, Lord? that I might believe on him. And Jesus said unto him, thou hast both seen him and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I come into the world that they which see not might see and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, if ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. Amen. Thank you, my brother, for that read. You know, every single person in the world, whether it's hundreds or thousands, God knows the number, that is blind uh, today. If they obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, they will have spiritual eyesight inwardly and when they leave this body, they will be able to see everything clearly for all eternity. Those who are blind physically, who die in their sins, Jesus said, if you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come. They're going to be able to see in HD clarity, the fire and brimstone. Because remember, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God or neither does it go to hell. But the spirit is able to see once it leaves the body. And they're going to be able to see clearly what's what's in hell and the reason why why they're there. Those today that are not a part of the body of Christ are, are blind spiritually. They cannot see spiritually. We're living in a world with millions or billions of blind people spiritually walking around. They're just walking around blind. They cannot see God's word. We are servants and stewards to give them the word of God so they can be enlightened. But as Jesus mentioned, he said, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. So if they say they can see, their sin remains. Therefore, they remain, remain in spiritual, spiritual blindness. In verse number 34, they answered and said unto him, thou was altogether born and sins and doth dost thou teach us and they cast him out how do they how do they know he was born in sin why are they judging him according to that now he asked he said some statements since the world began was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind if this man were not of god he can do nothing he's teaching them in verse number 31 he says now we know that God hear not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and do this will him, he heareth. Verse 34, they answered and said to him, that was altogether born in sins. They cast him out. They didn't answer any of his statements. They didn't disprove of what he said in verse 31, 32, 33. They didn't, they could not prove or disapprove what he was saying. So all they said was, get out. Sometimes, in the church of Christ, we have that where you're standing on truth. They let you know, you know, there's other churches of Christ that you can go to, but we don't teach that here. Were you married, divorced, and remarried? We need to find that out before we baptize you. When it comes to what he said, they were still not able to answer what he said, his statement. Look what he said in verse number 37. Jesus said unto him, thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. Dost thou believe on the Son of God? Verse 35, verse 38, and he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Again, he's calling him the Son of God while he's on earth. Some believe he was the Son of God when he resurrected changing the scriptures and the definition and they are blinded because they teach that he was only made the son of God when he resurrected some say he resurrected went to heaven and he's no longer 
the son of God. He was only the son of God when he was on earth. So they're blinded. There's many forms of spiritual blindness that individuals have, you know. And so when it comes to, look at Isaiah chapter number 56, looking at verse 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his own gain from his quarter. In the Old Testament, they had men that were like this as well. In the New Testament, the Pharisees were like this as well. Jesus mentioned in Matthew chapter number 23 concerning the Pharisees. He mentioned what they were like. In Matthew chapter number 23, verse 23, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These are ye to have done, and not to have to leave the other undone. This story, uh, John chapter 9 with the blind man, the Pharisees probably thought, this is never going to be written down. This is never going to be told generations and centuries later, over and over again. This is just a conversation between me, us, the blind man, his parents, and that's it. That's all that's going to happen. We're right. Jesus is wrong. And that's the way it is. They didn't know that this was going to be recorded and told over and over again. And just, it shows you an example of what happens to you when you don't believe, when you become so prideful that you blind yourself. It also shows you the heart of these men and how they treated a servant of God, because even though he was blind, he was still a servant of God. And so, it shows us how we are to treat one another in the kingdom of the church from the least to the greatest. Because the Holy Spirit recorded this conversation and a lot of people probably thought that this man, this blind man who's begging, he's a nobody. They pass by him all the time. They don't give him a look. They may throw some change to him. They may not. You know, and a lot of times uh, they may have seen him as a man that is of low significance because of his case, because of his blindness. They probably thought, as the disciples said, who sinned, his parents or him, that he was born blind. But here we have a recorded conversation in the scriptures, John 9, where this man was a righteous man. He had wisdom. He reproved the Pharisees. He understood the mind of God. We know that God hears not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God, do his will. Him he hears. God is hearing his prayer. He worshiped Jesus Christ as the son of God. And so when it comes to today, saints, God is looking. He is looking at the heart of all men, from the leaders, the elders, teachers, preachers, deacons, to those who are the lowest esteem in the eyesight of many. He's looking at all the hearts of men. And he desires that we be merciful, judge righteous judgment, and repeat the oracles. As Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. We are to feed them what they need to be fed concerning comfort, whether they need strength, whether they need admonishment, or whether they need funds. Sometimes their lights go out. Sometimes they need aid financial in some way for their health. In Matthew chapter 25, and when you look at verse 20, 35, for I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then the righteous answered him saying, Lord, when I uh, saw we thee and hungered, fed thee, thirsty, gave thee drink. When saw we thee stranger, took me in naked, clothed thee. When saw we sick or in prison, came in unto thee, the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it 
unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. The least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. And so we ought to be servants of the Lord. Repeat the oracles. If there's someone that's in prison, go visit them. If there's someone that's bedridden, go and visit them. They need to be fed spiritually. Feed them physically. Even as James said, even as John said, if they lack physical sustenance, give them what they need. Thirsty, clothed, physical and spiritual. We ought to give them those things and help our brethren. That's the lesson, saints. Thank you for your comments. They were great help in adding to these scriptures in John chapter 9. We're just servants. We're just to read and believe. Obey what is said. Have the thoughts of John 9 and place them on our hearts that we can be like Christ. That's the lesson, saints. If there's any comments or questions before we close, you can say it now. Your comment or question. I also want to add for those listening that Christ, he came, he died, buried, and resurrected according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. He gave a commandment to his disciples to go into all the world, preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. In Acts 2, 36, Peter said, Therefore let all the house of Israel know surely that God has made the same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can be able to see spiritually where a man like myself, the Kennedy, the Henry, or the Green, after you confess that Christ is the Son of God, will be dipped in water, where an operation happens, Colossians 2, God, Christ, by the Holy Spirit, will remove the sins, gives you a, give you of a spirit. You'll be born again. You'll be able to see spiritually from that day forward in any water that we can dip you in. And you'll be saved. For those listening, you can give us a call or we can have a conversation with you through the scriptures so we can guide you. And any question you have, we can ask them with the scriptures. At this time, uh, lesson is closing. Is there any comments or questions before we close? Go ahead, Brother Kennedy. Uh, um, great job, man. That was great, great job, man. Great, great closing. Um, you know, I just, I just wanted to just kind of like add a little something, um, with this, uh, ending from verse 35 to 41 that just, that really, uh, got my attention. You know, you know, this blind man, he never saw Jesus, uh, when he was blind. Um, you know, once Jesus gave him his, his, I call it marching orders, <laughs> um, and told him what to do. Uh, Jesus, Jesus took off. And so this, this, him having this first opportunity to see Jesus, you know, it, it shows us in, 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 in these few scriptures here that, you know, when, when, when oftentimes when we having a conversation with somebody about, um, you know, seeking out Jesus or believing in Jesus, um, oftentimes when we having those kind of conversations, people feel like just by acknowledging who Jesus is, that is you believing, you know, that is, that is, that is you, uh, trying to have a relationship. And, and, and these scriptures right here showed us that it's more than just acknowledging it be because the moment that, you know, the, that, that Jesus ha started having this conversation with this blind man and he started to talk to him about, you know, do you believe, uh, does thou believe on the son of God? This, the, the blind man's posture changed like he 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 went from I mean, he was he went in a in a, a proactive state where he was like, OK, who is this person so I can believe he was seeking this person out. You know, he wanted this. So, you know, that lets you know that when a person truly desires to have a relationship with Christ, when a person is sincere um, in, 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 in the things that when, when we're talking about spirituality, you're going to be seeking you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be trying to follow. You're going to be putting yourself in position to do what you need to do to be in alignment, which ends with obeying. And, you know, this, this blind man was able, was able to do that. He was able to show what true faith 
really should look like when a person, especially when you've been blessed, you know, like, uh, you know, to be, to be blind and, and, and then now have the ability to be, to, to see, you know, that's, 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 that's a blessing. That's to be, to be lame, not being able to walk and have an ability to now run, you know, and, 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 and those are, those are, those are things that you can't quantify. And when you know, it comes from, uh, uh, deity, at this point in time, he believed. I mean, look, notice how he just, he said, I be Lord, I believe. He confessed it. Lord, I believe. You know, that's that was that was that was true form of worship. That whole process that took place was an example of, you know, some uh, some true worship. And um, you know, it just goes to show us that uh when 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 we are blessed spiritually, you know, we we have to have this same type of uh approach that that this blind man because we were all blind now we might not have been physically blind and i i know you alluded to it you know uh, um, um earlier where you talked about you know you know being able to spiritually see now having an opportunity to truly rightly divide the word of god that is a blessing we can't take for granted because the moment you allow yourself to take that spiritual blessing for granted you'll find yourself in the same situation that a lot of our brothers are in now where they are, they are allowing the outside world to manip um, manipulate them and trick them to, to the point where now they don't know who Jesus is, or now they're introducing things into the worship service that we know that we have no author or um, authority to do. So, man, I appreciate this lesson, brother. I, I really do. And I can't wait to, to get the recording so I can go back into some of these uh, old Testament scriptures that y'all bring in. Great job, brother. God bless you, brother Kennedy. Yeah, thanks for thank you for bringing that out. And you know, when you when you mentioned that he's he went to the pool of Siloam to wash, and then Jesus went away. So he did after he was healed of his blindness. He didn't even see Jesus. Maybe he was thinking, "Where is he at? You know, where where is he at that I so I could you know thank him so I could see him." But again, he ran to his neighbors. Because he was walking around being able to maneuver now that he has vision. Being blind, you need someone to guide you. You know, and we are blessed because through the scriptures, we're able to see Christ, his new covenant, his church. And we've never seen him before in person. I've never seen Christ in person. But there will be a day when we see his face. And when we're faithful, we'll see him in peace. You know, just like he's seen him in person, we'll be able to see Jesus Christ face to face. And that's what we desire you know, to see him in peace on that day. But when you look at, uh, when you look at 41, uh, ye should have no sin. Now we, but now you say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. And that, that's, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to many that are in the world, this is what brings a, a small sorrow because they don't want to see. They remain blinded. You know, they don't want to believe what, is in the scriptures. They don't want to believe what Jesus said in order to see him here on earth because you can see him spiritually through the word on earth and they don't want to see him because, again, they say we don't have any sin. We said the sinner's prayer already. I got baptized in the Baptist church. I'm a Pentecostal. I spoke in tongues. I'm a Catholic. I pray to Mary. Don't speak against her. That's the mother of God. And they say that they can see and we're trying to help them as servants of God we pray that they one day obey, but we know that a lot of them will not obey. A lot of them will remain blinded until they leave this earth and they will be cast into outer darkness. And so when it comes to this, this blind man, he's seen Jesus Christ. We desire to see him at the end because we see him now through his word. We see his body. We see how his spirit sounds like. What did Jesus say? My sheep follow me. They know my voice. They follow me. So we're following him here on earth. We're able to recognize what the spirit of Christ sounds like here on earth. And we can see that's not the spirit of Christ. Jesus doesn't talk like that. No, Jesus doesn't talk like that. Can I see where he talks like that? Can you show me? And then they can't. And so we're a blessed people. We're a blessed nation uh, to be a part of spiritual the Zion. The Jerusalem that came down from heaven, it's a blessing because 
we can have a relationship here on earth with Jesus Christ while he's in a throne in heaven, watching down, maneuvering and opening up the scriptures for us continually because he wants us to abound. He wants us to have more of the truth in us, that we not be deceived, and that we continually bear fruit. We just pray that the, those listening here on this audio, those in the world will take heed, ask questions, um, that all things may be proved. As the Bible says in Thessalonians, prove all things, hold fast. That was just good. Uh, thank you, Brother Kennedy. Is there any other comments or questions before I toss it back yeah. to Brother Green? Yes, sir. Um, I just want to take another look back at uh, verse number 32 in John chapter 9. And if my understanding of this scripture is correct, man, this is really powerful. When you look at it, this is really powerful because notice what the blind man said to them. He said, since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? So if I'm understanding this, this scripture correctly, he said, since the world began, have y'all ever heard of anybody that was able to make somebody that was born blind see? That's really powerful. Because if, if they would have been really paying attention, you know, nobody has ever did this. So that right there, and we know that the hard heartedness of, of the Pharisees that they just refused to see, but that should have been enough right way to minute. This man caused somebody to be able to see that was born blind. Nobody has ever did this before. Nobody. <laughs> So, you know, it, it is just that that scripture is really powerful to me. And I had one more comment I wanted to make. You know, I was thinking about the comments, Brother uh, Javier, that you had made about them Jehovah Witness. And I don't know if that's a pattern of theirs, because I remember some years back in the counter I had with them and they were trying to teach me. And I sat there and I patiently listened to them. And when they pointed out something to me, and I just made one comment, I just said, well, you know that the law of Moses didn't pertain to us today, right? And when they heard me say that, man, they took their little stuff and they took, I mean, literally ran, literally running down. No, we don't want to talk to you. We don't want to talk. And I'm like, when I heard what you just said, I'm like, I wonder, is that their pattern? When they run into somebody that has knowledge of the scriptures and is showing them where they're wrong, now they're ready to run off and they don't want to talk to you no more. You know, I, that just the thought that came to my mind. Did you have some, Brother Stevenson? I seen you had raised your hand. Yeah, I was going to say great points, Brother Kennedy, and, and you too, Brother, uh, Brother Javier and Brother uh, Green. Great, great points, you know. This is a powerful chapter, and that verse you just read is very powerful because, again, this this man is exactly right. You know, brothers and sisters, that's why G John is showing us Jesus, the light of the world. That's the whole key. We can't see without Jesus. And that's all of this. This blind man represents all of us, poor, uh, helpless, and we all need a physician because we're all blind, and we need to be blind to the way and the ways, brothers and sisters, we need to live. Without Jesus, you, you can't see. And so this blind man can see because he understands he needs Jesus. And anybody who thinks that they don't need Jesus, let me tell you something, you, you, you can't see. You know, and you and I got to come to that realization. Yes, I am blind and I need Jesus to help me see, to shine the light on our, on our sins. You remember Paul was a Pharisee. Remember, Jesus, the light of the world. What happened to him? Well, a light knocked him to his knees. What did the light do? Blinded him. So why? So that he can now see. You see that? So he can now see. He thinks he's doing right. He thinks he's living right until Christ shines the light on him and blinds him, brothers and sisters, and knocks him to his knees. Now he can see. And now he can preach the gospel message. He can preach the same message that you and I preach today. To Javier's point, when he gave the plan of salvation, many people, brothers and sisters, say, I just can't see. I just can't see. There's one church. I just don't see how I need to be baptized. Well, that's what the gospel does. It's to shine the light on the truth. It's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to those that are lost and whom the God of this world, now get this, has blinded their minds unless the glorious light of the gospel, 
should shine unto them, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. And so that's the idea. The devil wants to keep you blind to the spiritual truth. The devil wants to keep you and I from coming to Jesus, who is the great physician. He is the only one, brothers, who can cure us of our sickness, our greatest sickness, and that is sin. And there are many people that think they can see without impossible, brothers. So you're not living life. I'm not living life if I'm not living in the light of God's word, if I'm not living in the light of Jesus. And this, can I get one more scripture? Yeah, this applies to individuals and the churches. You remember the church in, in Laodicea, Revelation 3? You know, the, and there's a lot of church of Christ. I think they got it going on. But they are so far away. Orpheus, Haywood, and them are so lost over there at Renaissance. It's ridiculous. But you can't you can't tell them by the physical stuff. They think they got it going on. They got the numbers. They got the they they, they got the people. They got the bank account. And they really think they got it going on based upon physical judgments. That's the problem. Pharisees' problem is they want to judge somebody based upon their physical uh, standards. He's blind. Who's sin? Uh, who's his parents? How much money? You know, that, that's foolishness. You don't judge people on, on, on physical standards, on their flesh. And so in Revelation 3, I know we've already had a long stay, but 17, he, Jesus is writing to a church in Laodicea. And I'm just going to pick up in verse 17, because you say I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and know it's not that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That's what this congregation is. He says, I counsel you, Jesus is talking here, to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that you may be rich and white raiment, and thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness do not appear, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous, therefore, and repent. And that's why Jesus came. To show us, point out our sins, cause us to repent, and understand that we can only have forgiveness of sin through Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Man, thank you, Brother Henry. Uh, God bless you, my brother, for those scriptures. Uh, I want to piggyback just real quick before we close on Brother Green, when he read verse 32, when he said that since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? What he's doing is, at the same time, he's bragging on the Lord. He's boasting in the Lord and the power that the Lord just showed. Because he's saying, look at me. Look what God did in my life. Since the world began, this has never happened. That is, I think that's one of the statements that also angered them. Because they cannot disprove that since the world began until today. And then he's like, look at this. Look at me. You know, when uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 9, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This man is boasting in the Lord. He's bragging on the power of the Lord, and they hate that. They hate it because they thinking, they're thinking the power is in keeping the Sabbath. Don't, don't do anything on the Sabbath. Don't heal. Don't do any type of servile work. That's where they're thinking the power is. And then he switches back and he says, look at me. So they're going back and forth. Talk to his mom and dad. Uh, talk to the neighbors. Ask him again. Who, who, tell me again the story. I, they just don't want to believe that's where the power is. And a lot of people, they don't want to believe. Hey, let's, let's just read this and I'll toss it. In uh, 1 John, 1 John chapter number 5. Verse 7, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Three that bear record, witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. These three are green one. The, the fact that the power of sanctification and sealing a spirit and adding to the church is done in the water by immersion when one confesses that Christ is the Son of God. The fact that that is the truth of how a soul is saved, the world hates that. The Baptists hate it. The Catholics hate it. The Methodists hate it. They say, get, get away from me. Get, get out of here. They'll cast you out because they don't like that's where the power is. And here, 1 John 5, 7 through 8, is where it shows us through the scriptures that where God put it. And he's looking, pointing at himself, look at me. Look, since the world started till today, look at this. Boy, they were hot. They, they couldn't even sleep. You know, those three years that preach, Jesus preached, there was days where they couldn't sleep. Isaiah talked about it, where they couldn't rest. They did not want to believe 
that that was true. And that is the truth, whether they like it or not, whether they like it or not. But uh, that's the lesson. That's the lesson, Saints. Uh, I'll toss it back onto you, Brother Green. Thank you. A wonderful lesson, Brother Javier. Uh, thank God for you, my brother, and God bless you. Do, Amen. Uh, what one, one last time, is there anybody else that has any questions or comments, whether it's pertaining to tonight's study or whether it's not pertaining to tonight's study? Anything at all that anyone may have. Go ahead, Sister Stevenson. Yes, sir. I like the way y'all have been going around and saying how the man uh, was showing God's power. But um, before you get to verse 25, when his parents didn't want to believe or his parents were afraid to speak up, and then he get to 25 and he said, he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know one thing that he where I was blind. Now I see. So and he didn't care if they put him out because he like you like you said, he knows what the power of God had done for him, even though he didn't at that time know who Christ was. But like in the fur further sentences, further um, paragraphs down further, like you said, in 32, you know, he expressed the power of God and he was he was rejoiced and he believed and he did worship him once he did know who Christ was and that was my comment Amen. thank God you for that you. sister Stevenson do we have anyone else anyone else any questions any comments whether it's pertaining to tonight's study or no all right, if there's no further uh, questions or comments, just a reminder, everyone, Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page, we'll have our uh, open forum. So as always, is there anybody that you know that's interested in studying God's word, please feel free to invite them. All are welcome. Um, so just that reminder, once again, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Brother Stevenson's Zoom page. Uh, with that being said, is there anyone that has any prayer requests before we close out? Any prayer requests? All right. If we have no one with any prayer requests, Brother Stevenson, if you don't mind, would you do the honors and close us out with a word of prayer? Sure will. Let's pray, Brother So Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for another opportunity of life. Our God, we thank you for another opportunity to be uh, part of this Zoom uh, study where we have a opportunity can do it this uh, internet to study your word and to listen and to to learn uh, things that will make us just stronger and better uh, in the kingdom and in the faith I pray father none of us are just hearers but we're doers of your word pray that we all understand that we need Jesus there is no life a uh, true life outside of Christ uh, without Christ we're nothing and I pray we all understand that, that our, our lives while we're here on this earth should always be used to grow even the greater in the in the knowledge of your son. Uh, dear God, and just to be an example and a light to a dark and to a dying in a sinful and a sinful world. Uh, we do understand that light and darkness cannot uh, inhabit the same space. And so, Father, I just pray that we'll let our light shine wherever we are. Uh, that people may see our good works and give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you for your manservant, Brother Javier. I just I can't thank you enough, Father, for allowing him to cross my path. I'm sure we all can say the same. His his love for your word, his his ability, Father, to teach it. Just pray you continue to bless this brother, dear God, with, with your wisdom. And, and Father, I just pray he'll continue to, to have the love for you and the desire to just want to do all that he can uh, in the kingdom, Father God. Just hold him up on every leaning side. Again, none of us are sinless. We have all we all have things we need to work on. Um, but dear God, I just pray that we will all uh, do all that we can, dear God, that we will not blaspheme your name. And just thank you for his teaching on tonight. Pray there was something that was said uh, in all of our hearing that we just gained a little, little more encouragement than we had uh, before we started this Zoom study on tonight. If there be any, any on here who are sick and just didn't acknowledge it or know of any who are sick, Father, as we are bowed together in prayer, we lift them up to you knowing that, God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or all that we thank. Thank you for loving us first, dear God. I pray we don't get that misconstrued. Uh, we love you because you first loved us, Father, and you proved it when you sent your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for living a sinless life, giving us the opportunity to make heaven our home and have our sins buried in your blood. There's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Jesus, and we love you. This prayer we offer up tonight is in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that wonderful prayer. Uh, Brother Stevenson, 